Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to discover what would happen if Earth was a satellite of Jupiter. Anyway, let's play around with the Universe Sandbox and find out what would happen. Welcome to What The Math. So we're going to go into a normal simulation here and we're going to place a few moons of Jupiter and uh, basically place Earth as one of them. And we're going to imagine a hypothetical situation where uh, Earth may have been captured by Jupiter billions of years ago or may have been actually born uh, from the same material as some of the moons of Jupiter and was basically always in this area. So we're going to basically imagine that Jupiter actually has a planetary object around it. So if we were to add moons here, you'll see that there's going to be quite a lot of them orbiting already. We're going to basically just keep them here. And uh, just to accelerate time, we're going to erase some of the objects we don't need, like fragments and um, asteroids and such. And let's, uh, let's place Earth somewhere here. So hypothetically, we know that long time ago, billions of years ago, Jupiter was quite influential in causing a huge stir in our solar system. Many of the planets that existed in our solar system were destroyed because Jupiter came too close to them. And uh, Earth and other terrestrial planets were very likely created as a result of various collisions of early gas giants. And um, we're going to place Earth somewhere around Jupiter, maybe right here. And let's see, actually see the effects of um, of this. We're going to run, just run the simulation normally and look at climate, look at other parameters of Earth, find out what's going to happen. So yes, earlier on, it's uh, it, there actually was a chance for Jupiter to capture um, several of the planets because it did come relatively close to the Sun. Well, not super close, but close enough to potentially influence an orbit of various objects and thus even capture um, something. But it never happened. As a matter of fact, all of the moons of Jupiter uh, were created from the same material, from the same ring as Jupiter itself. And it did actually um, lose some of the moons early on because some of them um, actually came too close to Jupiter and collided with it. But it also has a lot of these smaller moons, a lot of these smaller tiny moons around it. These are all captured moons. These were all captured over time. M many of these are asteroids. Many of these are smaller dwarf planet-like objects, and all of them were captured within the last few billion years. There's at least 67 moons we know of, there's possibly more, and all of them are basically in orbit around Jupiter. So, let's imagine that Earth is here now. We don't know how this happened, but it happened. What is going to happen to Earth? Well, first of all, you'll notice that the temperature is now about 10 degrees cooler. We're going to run this a little bit longer and see if the temperature drops even more uh, because we're now at a very, very far away distance. We're farther away than Mars. The actual distance in terms of astronomical units is about five astronomical units. So we're about five times more far away from the sun, which uh, if you know how the luminosity is calculated, means that it's uh, you have to square it. So basically it's 25 times less luminous here. The sun is very, very dim would thus receive a lot less sunlight and a lot of the heat that's created on the planet Earth is actually because of the tidal forces. So the tidal effects from other moons like um, Io right there and also Callisto uh, and Ganymede and Europa somewhere in the vicinity. There's Europa right there. Uh, the tidal effects from these moons and also the tidal effects from Jupiter itself are actually generating a lot of internal heat now. So our planet Earth is probably uh, experiencing quite a lot of various earthquakes, really high tsunamis once in a while, and uh, a lot of unusual terrestrial effects that we would not normally not experience from the moon itself because our moon doesn't provide as much tidal, um, tidal forces. But here the tidal effects would be quite dramatic. And actually, we can see the tidal uh, heating effects by going under motion here. And the value that we get is, uh, so this is in megawatts. Let's try to, let's try to remember this value. So it's approximately what? Okay, it changes quite dramatically, actually. Uh, so this is a tidal force effect and this is a tidal heating effect. Oh, wow, it goes up really, really high. 
And so that's uh, what is this? Let's look at the number. The maximum number here is four four point five billion uh, megawatt. So this is just remember this now. Four point five billion megawatt. Um, and this is essentially the tidal stress caused by various objects here. And depending on how far away uh, from other moons we are, we will either experience much less tidal heating and tidal forces or uh, much more. Now let's actually compare this to the tidal heat and tidal effects that Earth gets just from our regular moon. I'm going to place moon right here. There's going to be moon orbiting around Earth. There's the moon. And let's go into the same value and look at that. It's only like 100,000, 300,000 the maximum. That is ridiculously small in comparison. So the heating effect inside Jupiter Earth would be dramatically higher. That would mean that the planet would be actually very hot on the inside. The volcanism and uh, the earthquakes would increase in frequency. And since it's like practically a million times uh, more heat that's being generated inside Earth, it would very likely become kind of similar to Jupiter's uh, volcanic moon Io. So Io is basically like volcanic and is essentially like this because of the volcanoes on the surface. And there's a lot of volcanism, there's a lot of uh, eruptions here all the time, simply because of the tidal uh, heating tidal effects. Earth, due to its size, would experience quite a lot more and would probably not be as cold as it is here. And wow, it's suddenly minus 267 degrees Celsius here. That is a little bit too low. Let's, uh, let's see if we actually maybe made a mistake by accident here. And it seems that the temperature on our planet, even despite the tidal heating, um, seems to be actually decreasing. It's already at minus 30 degrees Celsius and it's dropping quite fast. Uh, so we're going to see what it gets to in a few years. But yeah, even though there is a lot of heat on the inside, so the planet might be actually um, quite volcanic. Oh, okay, we just received a collision from something. Yeah, that's another danger of having of being in Jupiter's vicinity and being so massive, is that you actually attract other objects and you would very likely have quite a lot of collisions. So that will probably kill everything. I don't even know what collided with Earth, but whatever it was, it just created a huge explosion that pretty much killed um, at least this part of the Earth, this hemisphere. This ha the other hemisphere seems to be doing okay. That was pretty cool though. Well, didn't expect that. But anyway, it might happen again because there is, like I said, 67 satellites. Earth is quite massive, so it does actually have quite a strong pull on other objects. But it will probably stay in the orbit, in a stable orbit around Jupiter, uh, for quite some time. Unless, of course, something dislodges um, its orbit and makes it either collide with Jupiter or escape into the other um, outer solar system. But that's unlikely to happen anytime soon. So... Um, we were talking about the tidal heating effects and on our planet Earth, it might actually even look like this because of the vol volcanic eruptions that will constantly occur now, uh, simply because of the tidal forces. So it will be hot on the inside, cold on the outside. And uh, one good thing about being so close to Jupiter is that we're very likely going to be protected um, by its magnetosphere from the radiation from the sun. but Jupiter itself generates quite a lot of radiation too, so even though we're going to be protected from solar radiation, Jupiter might actually be radiating our surface with its own particles. And so we don't really know if the atmosphere on Earth will survive for a very long time, but it is quite possible. Anyway, we're going to accelerate this a little bit more, and let's find out what happens to our planet maybe after a few more weeks. So the temperature actually, because of the collision, jumped up to like... 30 or 40 degrees Celsius on average. But it seems that other than the, uh, this one collision, in every other respect, our Earth seems to be doing okay-ish. So it does get a little bit cold. So if I were to actually enter the manual value here, it's going to be under about minus 30 degrees Celsius and it's dropping even further. So maybe it's even lower than this. So the greenhouse effect on Earth is not enough to uh, create a warm enough cli uh, climate we would need to have something else and even more so than just volcanic eruptions to make it um, habitable and basically terraformed again. So if an Earth was so far away from the Sun, it would receive 25 times less luminosity, 25 times less heat from the Sun. And so the temperature here would be very, very cold. And we're going to find out how cold it gets after a few minutes. 
Also, you can kind of see that the other side of Earth, due to the collision, became very interesting looking. There's a lot of craters and a lot of interesting uh, structures that have been formed in the place where I think Africa used to be. Or no, wait, that's South America. Yeah, South America has been completely eliminated. Now, one thing I uh, forgot to mention is that uh, because Earth is very likely going to be tidally uh, locked to Jupiter, uh, depending on where it orbits, its day is going to be a lot faster. So, in this case, one single orbit takes about 1.23 days, which means that one day on Earth is a little bit longer than usual. If it was a little bit closer to Jupiter, it would be possibly a little bit faster, but the length of the day would be determined by where in orbit around Jupiter Earth is located. But despite still being kind of um, Earth-looking, as in there's still water here, there's still, uh, I believe, magnetosphere, if I were to enable it, I, I think it's going to show, yeah, there's still magnetosphere to protect us, and there's still quite a lot of other things that we usually need for life. One thing that's definitely going to be missing from Earth, if it was a moon of Jupiter, is the temperature. We're already at minus 101 degrees Celsius, and it's still dropping. The greenhouse effect is only 21 degrees Celsius, and in this location, it's very likely that Earth is going to be very, very similar in temperature to Jupiter, which actually has a temperature of... Okay, well, the temperature here is minus 93 degrees Celsius, but it's probably going to be closer to like minus 130 due to the uh, location in, in space around the sun here. So it's probably going to become a frozen land. It's probably going to be uninhabited and at least uh, difficult to survive on for most creatures because basically the temperatures here would be similar to like the coldest temperatures on Earth right now. And the only thing that we uh, might be able to do to survive here is to live in like caves and underneath the ice here because there might be heat coming from the inside due to the tidal heating effects. There's going to be a lot of heat that's going to be formed uh, from within the Earth. But everything else on this planet is going to be very likely difficult to survive on and will probably resemble the surface of other moons of Jupiter, like for example, the infamous Ganymede, the biggest moon in our solar system. So this is yet another uh, moon that has a very interesting surface, but it has a lot of ice on the surface and a lot of rock as well. And this is what Earth might actually resemble with the average temperature of about minus 164 degrees Celsius. Possibly a little bit higher due to atmosphere. So, this is what would happen to our planet Earth if it was a moon of Jupiter. And anyway, let me know in the comments below if I, if I've forgotten to mention something. And if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos and wants to learn through video games, and come back tomorrow to learn something else about space, science, math, or maybe something else. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Let's actually explode our Earth before we finish this video. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.